Jiskara steps off the sleek, bizarre craft onto the landing deck of the vast city, claws clacking on the metal ground, and purple striped skin shining with iridescence of the orange tinted light of the twin stars above. Two humans, in clean white military suits with sleek guns at their hips behind, watching her every move. This first step is one straight into the history books. The first time a non-human so much as got within visual range, let alone set a claw on, the famous fortress world of forward command. And not only that, Jiskara is on a diplomatic mission, serving as an ambassador for the very force forward command stands against. For eight months, the conflict has been a stalemate. Not a single ship of the great Six Cities Alliance making it past a clear line in the sand drawn by humanity. And at the forefront of this line is a binary star system, where any craft is obliterated before so much as reaching the heliosphere. No mines, no projectiles detected, no communications, just carriers and cruisers and capital ships suddenly collapsing into debris. The ambassador steps forward, and is met by a man in full military dress uniform, blue sheen to the black suit. He's tall by human standards, which puts him a solid foot below the towering live Deltian, stepping forward, wrapping her mouth around the alien sounds of English with all the attitude befitting of a diplomat. General Lopez, I appreciate you offering to permit me a tour of your military facilities. The older man, nodding and extending a hand, which awkwardly hangs in the air with no reciprocation. Ambassador Zishkara, we hope that a showcase of our installments will help in pursuing further peace talks with the Six City Alliance. Voice dripping with venom as he turns tail and leads them to a waiting rail car. Alien diplomat having to duck down to fit into the heavily guarded, heavily armoured vehicle, silent tail following behind. Forward Command is a vast, extremely fortified installment. Less a city and more a singular machine. Huge metal walls, layer upon layer of catwalks and railway tracks and conveyor belts. Greys and whites and camouflage tan. Every single square centimetre optimised for military production. A festering pockmark of munitions and highly trained soldiers. In short, it's nothing Zeskara hasn't seen before. And the Deltian is wholly unimpressed, making sure to tell the General as much. In diplomatic terms, of course. This instalment is a wonder of engineering. We have one much similar on Skelsif and Crawl, though those are both larger. The last stop of the tour, however, is the real important part. Thinly veiled pleasantries sipping on expensive drinks from their respective homeworlds as the railcar hurdles towards the very core of the city, where, rising above the whole vast facility, is an absolutely gargantuan tower, bristling with obscenely vast artillery guns of some form, metre width borne and hundreds long. The security is almost as obscene as the guns, though Shaskara is quick to privately note none of it would serve as any counter to the bugs she has been suddenly planting throughout. Sloppy on their behalf, though so far little she's seen was worth listening in on. She's not listening to the general in the elevator as he talks. Just a full command outpost, not a fully fledged. Busy puzzling in her head over the purpose of this visit. The elevator doors open into a control room. Ah, here is the real meat and potatoes of our little tour. Dishing out towards the wide glass windows, looking down onto a vast open space. All sides bristling with the mechanisms used to load the massive guns. Engineers crawling all over, and artillery crews on perpetual standby. Filling most of the central space, vast tubular devices piles high, about a metre thick, fifteen long with a rounded front and back like an oversized cigar, some with panels popped open to reveal a complex mass of piping and coils inside. Pipings and coils that, under closer inspection, Jaskara recognises as the internals of a light drive, by clearly a crude, cheap variant. So, Ambassador... You've likely been wondering throughout this whole trip how it is that you are the first Deltian to so much as set eyes on this world. This here is how, he states, waving his hand broadly across the array. They're very crude, actually. A light drive up the front, won't work down the spine, and the rest is just batteries. We point them at your ships when our boys fire off, and just set them in motion. Tiny jumps is the trick. She takes a moment to put things together, a look of shock on her reptilian, eyeless face as she puts it together. Banished back to impassiveness in moments. Tiny, tiny jumps. About 50 metres in all likelihood, over and over again. Because all projectile detection relies on seeing it first. If it's travelling overall just faster than the speed of light, though... You get carriers and cruisers and capital ships suddenly collapsing into debris because a 50 metre long solid metal beam just materialised directly inside them. An ingenious design, it's already comment. 
Lopez is barely able to restrain a beam at having finally outmaneuvered the diplomat. However, I must ask, why would you clearly showcase and explain your secret weapon to the enemy it is used against? She asks. Realization hitting her exactly as the words fall from her lips. Why the general has just calmly explained humanity's secret weapon to her. Why the security was so lax. Why this is simply called forward command despite rivaling the crown jewels of her own military. They played their hand because they know that there's nothing the six cities can do about it. No need for a poker face when you're holding all the aces. Naturally, the war drew to a mostly peaceful resolution at the bargaining table just a few months later.